I don't know about you guys, but after watching that Super Bowl last night, I'm feeling united. I'm feeling the urge to give passionate woke hugs to my brothers aspiring to be sisters. My woke smoothie runneth over. I guess football really is for everyone, and that's not my opinion. You don't have to take my word for it. Roger Goodell and the NFL front office, they beam with rainbow pride when they say football is for everyone. Inclusion, oh, unity, U-N-I-T-Y, U-N-I-T-Y, that's a unity. Headline from Out Sports. NFL makes the Super Bowl gay, gay, gay. Woohoo! Yes, yes, yes. Over the last couple of years, it seems like the NFL has been on a mission to diversify their audience. The league claims they want to bring people together. Now, maybe it's just me, but... There just seems to be something different about the modern NFL. Going into the Super Bowl last night, I could not have cared less. I put a little bit of money on the Niners in the under last night, trying to make the game more interesting. For three and a half quarters, I was bored out of my mind. I couldn't get into it. It felt like a microcosm of the NFL season. Both offenses were struggling. The game never got into a real rhythm. The biggest story going into halftime and maybe even overtime was Travis Swiffer having an emotional meltdown on the sideline and bouncing his man boobs off the shoulder of head coach Andy Reid. Speaking of unity... That really unified the NFL fan base. The overreactions were at an all-time high. Kelsey Travis is an abuser! Run, Tay-Tay, run! You're his next victim! I'm not even going to address that stupidity. If I were Taylor Swiffer, I wouldn't be worried about my future divorcee, Kelsey. I would be more concerned with my close proximity to Jackie Mahomes. The wannabe victims of mythical racism on social media, they twisted the situation between Andy Reid and Travis Swiffer and claimed it was an example of white privilege. If a black player did that to Andy Reid, he would be kicked out of the league. White privilege is real. Are you feeling the unity yet? I seem to remember Latrell Sprewell putting a sleeper hold on head coach PJ Carlissimo. After the incident, he played in the NBA for another eight years. It was a week of unity last week in Las Vegas. You had the NFL-sponsored Pride celebration last Wednesday where people were encouraged to share stories of gender-affirming care. The latest edition of Woke Illustrated was released last week. Who was on the cover to represent unity? What beautiful woman did they select to unify the country? (laughs) Brittany Mahomes, the matriarch of unity. I, uh, uh, let's just move on from that. For the third consecutive year, the NFL wanted to unify the country before kickoff by playing the national anthem. Now, this is a great idea, right? The National Anthem, Pride for Your Country, that should be something that we can all agree on. The NFL, though, they look at the National Anthem a little bit differently than the rest of us. You see, the original National Anthem, it's not very equitable. There's no mention of diversity. It was written back in the 1700s, 200 years before desegregation. I guess the NFL feels like the original National Anthem is a bit antiquated, but that's okay. That's okay. NFL fans who like tradition, NFL fans who prefer to hear the actual national anthem, the NFL has you covered. They hired Reba McIntyre to represent people resembling Big Red Joy Behar to beautifully sing the actual national anthem. But what about representation for black people? According to the mainstream media, the national anthem doesn't represent them. Even though millions of black people fought wars for this country defending the freedoms mentioned in the national anthem. You know that line, in the land of the free? Yeah, yeah, black people fought for that too. Instead of the national anthem representing all of us, instead of the national anthem being used to unify us, the NFL... They decided to segregate 13% of the country by having Andre Day sing what the media calls the Black National Anthem. Last I checked, the title of the song was Lift Every Voice and Sing. 
all of a sudden when George Floyd happens a few years ago, we decide to rewind the clock a hundred years and we start calling the song the Black National Anthem. I would be willing to bet 95, maybe even 99% of the country never heard of that song until George Floyd. Look, I don't have a problem with Lift Every Voice and Sing being played at the Super Bowl. Does it hurt anything? No. Is the song itself divisive? No. If the NFL marketed the performance as something like America the Beautiful, just another song that's performed before the real national anthem, I don't think most people would have a problem with it. But that's not how the NFL markets the song. That's damn sure not how the mainstream media promotes the song. In the name of unity... The song is promoted as the Black National Anthem. Just think about that. In order to unify us, they are separating us, dividing us. Headline at the Daily Mail. NFL fans are split by the playing of the Black National Anthem. I'm pretty sure split is the opposite of united. My problem is not with the song. My problem is the NFL and the mainstream media lying to us about it. It feels like the NFL is being used to further divide the country. We've already seen this happen before. Four years ago, the NBA was used to divide the country. Remember all the so-called unity in the NBA in the Orlando bubble, where you were accused of being a racist if you voted for Donald Trump? Orange man, bad! If you didn't support defunding the police, you were accused of being a racist. And by the way, by the way, Who was impacted the most by defunding the police? It wasn't me. During the middle of all that bullshit, police officers in my city, they were actually given a raise. Who was impacted the most by defunding the police? The marginalized communities the mainstream media claims to be fighting for. Minority communities and inner cities. We are seeing the same divisiveness in the NFL. It's just not as overt. It's just not as in your face as it was in the NBA. Think about it. Who is the most high-profile team in the NFL right now? The Kansas City Guardians. Let's review some of the biggest stories from this season from the Guardians. Now, just to be clear, most of these stories were created by the mainstream media. You tell me if these created stories were meant to unify us or divide us. Remember the young fan of the Guardians who painted his face red and black to be a mascot for his favorite NFL team? Kid was, what, nine years old? According to Karen Phillips and Deadspin, this male birthing person is racist! Not only does he dislike black people, he was also born with a deep-seated resentment towards the Guardians. Obviously, this was completely fabricated and one of many examples of mythical racism that we discuss all the time here on the channel. Was that fairy tale meant to unite or divide? Before the regular season and before he became a Swiffer, Travis Kelsey doubled down on divisiveness. He changed his name to Travis Pfizer, trying to convince people to get quadruple boosted. Take this Fauci love. Ooh, there's no loving like Fauci loving. He also lectured people on the importance of tolerance. He chastised normal people for boycotting Bud Light. Travis claimed that he enjoyed Bud Light almost as much as he enjoyed the grilled wiener. He encouraged NFL fans to support Oscar Mayer while also tolerating Bob Dylan Mulvaney. Now you tell me, was that unifying or divisive? And speaking of Kelsey Travis, let's get to this relationship with the Swiffer. God forbid... You get tired of hearing about that bullshit. God forbid you get on social media and say, can we not show Taylor Swiffer five times a quarter, five times a half, five times a game? Colin Cowherd, he'll accuse you of being a lonely virgin. Now, he won't call out the real Star Trek virgin Mike Freeman from USA Today, but Cowherd, along with his pretend friends in the media, they have no problem lecturing you because you're tired of the Swiffers. Again, unifying or divisive. The media, they pit NFL quarterbacks against each other. According to the media, MVP votes for Josh Allen is a vote for the white man. You can't like Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. It's either one or the other. The Mahomes Mafia. I compare them to the Mannings because in the last decade or so, they've been the most prominent families in the NFL. I challenge you to give me one example of the Manning family being divisive. 
compare the behavior of the Mannings to the behavior of the Mahomes. And look, I am not including Patrick Mahomes in this. You know exactly who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Brother Jackie, who prances around in his tutu, performing under his stage name, The Dancing Queen. Brittany Mahomes is constantly embarrassing the family on social media. The media, they are creating this narrative that the hatred for the Kansas City Guardians is rooted in jealousy. Fans always hate winners. They hate dynasties. I keep seeing these same comparisons to Tom Brady and the Patriots. I don't remember this level of hatred with Tom Brady and the Patriots. People might have been tired of them winning, tired of the dynasty, but the Patriots were universally respected. There is a strong level of disdain towards the Kansas City Guardians, and I don't think it has anything to do with football. It has everything to do with their antics on and off the field. Last night, CBS, they are going through the ceremony giving the Chiefs the Lombardi Trophy. Andy Reid handles it professionally. Patrick Mahomes handles it professionally. What does Travis Swiffer do? He gets on stage in front of a global television audience and starts screaming like a fucking banshee. Viva Las Vegas! Viva Las Vegas! You know, if I was 21 years old again, I'd probably think it was cool, but problem is, I'm not 21 years old. I am closer to Travis Kelsey's age, and the only thing it told me was, it's time to grow up. I feel bad for Patrick Mahomes. I really do. It's hard not to like this dude. Watching his post-game interview on NFL Network last night... This dude is extremely humble, he's gracious, he's everything you want in a franchise quarterback or as the face of your league. But, God, I mean, he's surrounded by idiots. I have a feeling the unity we saw last night and the unity we saw throughout the regular season, that is only the beginning. The media is going to continue using the NFL to divide the country. There's really only one way to stop it. The only reason it stopped in the NBA, people quit watching. I just, I don't see that happening though in the NFL. But give me your thoughts on this. NFL heavily criticized for playing two national anthems while also being praised for doing so. According to the media, that's called unity. Do you think the media is using the NFL to divide the country, or am I way off base here? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com, kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.